Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right, folks. Hail and welcome back. Excuse me. Hail and welcome back to uh, the next episode, the next rendition, the next uh, session of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast as brought to you by none other than me. Um, Trying to just get my bearings uh, set over here. As you can see, I have an unburnt uh, incense uh, burner and um, based off of the poll results that I posted last week um, I've got I've got mixed um, results so half of you voted well those of you that did vote um, I got almost like a 100% response to burn a balsam scented incense on the Spotify poll and then over here on the YouTube uh, channel uh, you know, the, the poll that was run last week there, uh, it was almost a neck and neck tie between frankincense and I want to say mugwort. Uh, but frankincense did beat um, mugwort or whichever the other one was. So I go, you know, now what do I do? Do I burn balsam or do I burn frankincense? And then I thought, ooh, let's get really wild and let's burn one of each. So here we've got a balsam uh, and frankincense stick that we're going to burn. So it's going to get nice and aromatic uh, up in here today. So I hope you guys have your smell of vision enabled, even if you don't have your uh, visual um, capabilities. If you're not watching this on YouTube or Spotify video podcasts, and you're just listening to this on one of your other podcast uh, platforms, uh, engage your smell of vision because it's about to get very aromatic in here. So before we get started with the show, Let's go ahead and just get these bad boys rolling. And so, yeah, I'm going to do this every week. Um, don't know if we'll do a poll next time or, or what. Um, did that one go? Yeah, I think that one went. Let's just double check and make sure. I always got to double check and make sure, you know. There it is. Okay. So hopefully I won't get too badly uh, smoked out here. I'm just going to keep this off to the side, still sort of kind of in frame. Um, But it's already smelling very, smelling like a a resiny, piney, almost woods. Um, I've also got some scotch going here, as is the norm. You know, so for you that are catching the premiere, Um, on Thursday mornings. Don't worry, I'm not drinking in the morning, although I have done that, and you keep your judgments to yourself on that, Um, because it's it's never a bad time to have a little knit of something, you know what I mean? Um, But this is a nice, uh, it's it's Jura, 
Jura, J-U-R-A is the, is the distillery or the brand. Um, and it's a, it, it's, it's a one that I recently tried. Um, I actually tasted it for the first time on the last uh, Plague Inc. gaming live stream um, on the YouTube channel. So if you guys caught me tasting it at that time, you'll know um, that I'm a big fan. It's, it's not a uh, very expensive scotch at all. I think this was just under $30 um, for the whole bottle. And it's, it's, it's got a lot of the caramelly kind of vanilla um, and, and bright fruity notes with a little bit of a touch of smoke. Nothing too crazy, nothing too, you know, it's definitely not an Islay. It's not, it's not an Islay, but it is a nice just sipping. I mean, they're all nice sipping scotches. So, um, but yeah, this is like a, I don't know. I think this was finished. I think it said it was finished in American oak barrels or oak barrels, something like that. So it's got a really, you know, kind of woody, almost, almost bourbony uh, thing going on, but it definitely doesn't, doesn't come off as a bourbon. It's more of just a, like a space side um, or lowland scotch. It is a single malt. Um, but so, yeah, guys, um, what are we going to be talking about this week? Well, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Um, but first, before we get into, you know, the actual subject of today's podcast, which is going to be about the sovereignty of the hearth and the blending of tribes. Um, now, before we get into that, um, I, I wanted to talk about an upcoming event that I hope to see some of my listeners, viewers, friends, subscribers. If you're in the Middle Tennessee area or close to Tennessee in any proximity, I mean, this, this is a, a, a yearly and annual event that uh, myself and hopefully other members of my tribe and my wife will be attending is the annual Sunablot uh, festival or, or celebration, which is hosted by the Raven Moon Hearth kindred or tribe, um, kind of north of Nashville in, in, in uh, Spring Hill. So that's where it's being held. There's going to be some details about that in the video description and in the podcast show notes. So whichever you know, platform you're on uh, catching this on, check out wherever the, that information is kept. It's you know, show notes for the podcast, description area for the video. Um, but I did want to talk a bit about it um, because uh, I have attended Suna Bloat uh, with the Hearth once before, uh, a couple of years ago, actually, probably now three years ago, at least three or four years ago. Has it been that long? Because it was before COVID. Uh, so it was either 2018 or 2019. So yeah, already three, maybe four years. And um, because of some situational things, um, we uh, have, or at least I have, um, refrained from going to a lot of hearth events. And this is going to kind of, you know, eventually segue into part of the topic of today's discussion, the blending of tribes, intertribal relations, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, suffice that to say, they, the, the, the good thing to report is that um, previous roadblocks uh, have been lifted in order for us to pursue uh, intertribal relations, you know, and, and having uh, members of each other's tribe get to know each other and, and kind of hopefully build more on the community as it exists right now. So it's going to be on June 18th, which is a Saturday. And as the name might suggest, Suna, Suna Blot, okay, is, is, it's, it's, a, it's an event. It's a public event. It's open to the public. It's not a uh, tribal only or, or a closed off event as, as some uh, holy tides or as some festivals or celebrations might be. This is open to the public. Um, and it is a festival, uh, a midsummer festival. Okay, as you can imagine, June is... Uh, it's almost, I mean, for Tennessee, you know, we're, 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 we're definitely in the middle of the year uh, and it, but summer still has a ways to go, but anyways, it's, it's right near, it's right around the time of what, you know, a lot of folks would uh, celebrate as, as the, uh, you know, the summer equinox. So June 21st, June 18th is the, is the weekend leading up to that. 
Um, but Sunnah bloat is a celebration uh, and a dedication to Sunnah, the, 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 the sacred representation of the sun. Um, some might say goddess, um, which is, I believe, the definition that uh, the hearth uses and some of the sources that you may read and hear about within, uh, like the Poetic Edda, Veluspa, um, or even Snorri's um, prose Edda in, in the poem Gufaginning, I believe Sunna is mentioned, but the female uh, representation of the sun in, in Germanic you know, mythology. So there's a going to be a, a bloat, a, a bloat to Sunna, a ritual being held. Um, I, usually, as I recall, it's held at the end of the day, of course, when the sun's going down. And um, But prior to that, throughout the day, there's going to be uh, games, there's going to be, you know, feasting, there's some vendors that are going to be showing up, um, all of which I don't have a lot of details on, but I know there's going to be some um, uh, folks who do like um, divination of sorts. Going to be talking about that here in just a second, because your guy over here will be there um, doing some of that, but there's a uh, going to be information posted again in the description and show notes of the video uh, or podcast, wherever you're catching this, that um, explain more in detail. So there, there's a Facebook page or a Facebook group event, you know, link that's going to be posted there. So, you know, feel free to, to, to check that out and, and, and see all what's going on. Some of the vendor information is posted in there. Um, Greg Strong, who's the chieftain, for Raven Moonhearth is, is kind of leading that uh, type of stuff. He's the one that's posting all about it and sharing information. Um, and it is a family friendly event. There is uh, Saturday into Sunday uh, capabilities of, 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 you know, so there'll be like camping options there. It's, it's, it's on one of the tribal members. And I think it's, it's, it's the Thule whose uh, property it's being ho it's hosted on in Spring Hill there uh, has, you know, plenty of land um, for, for people to, to stay over and camp if you so choose. Um, but all those details will be posted there. Uh, there is a, a entry fee. Um, you don't have to stay overnight. You don't have to stay the whole day. Um, but to come and to, to be a part of it, there is a, uh, an entry fee. So there's food, there's going to be community sharing, there's going to be fellowship, there's going to be you know, hopefully a lot of good weird being tied and I will be there with my wife um, and I will be kind of like a, you know, you could say vendor. Um, uh, I guess it's the best term because they're going to have people there that are selling their crafts, but also selling their services. Um, so I will be there um, in person at Suna Bloat on, on June 18th uh, to do rune castings. Um, ten dollars a cast, you know. So, and, and I don't do, you know, one rune cast. I'll do like a a, a three rune spread. Well, kind of like how the like we read about in in Tacitus's um, recollection of um, how the uh, the Germanic tribes would uh, I believe it was Tacitus. Yeah, I believe it was Tacitus, where he talks about how they um, they cast lots, you know, and they, or and they and they uh, from fruit bearing trees. Um, they have pieces of wood that they pick and they pick three different ones. And there, there's, there's designated people, um, that are supposed to do it. Um, but we're going to do like a three rune spread. Um, we'll talk a bit one-on-one -on -one about, you know, the purpose for the casting purpose for the drawing. Um, just trying to get a little bit of background and stuff on things and, and make it a, a thing. So I'll be doing that there. Um, might have a few items to actually sell. I do still have some rune sets um, that I've made, two of which are made out of seashells. Um, so I have, I have those I'm looking to try to, um, you know, provide uh, as, as a gift uh, or, or as, a, as, as, a, as a good, I should say, um, along with the services. So I'll be there. I'll be there at Suna Bloat. Um, not sure how long I'll be there, you know, the, the whole day or, or the, um, definitely not going to be staying overnight. Um, but if you're in the area and you're close enough to Spring Hill, Tennessee, come on out, become part of it. Um, would love to meet you. Um, uh, would love to get to know the other people out here that are, you know, listening and, and tuning into to this sort of thing. So I know there are some people that listen and watch, 
that are not that far from that area uh, of Tennessee and that would even be willing to travel a bit if they're outside of the immediate vicinity. So think about it and hope to see you there. So again, that's Saturday, June 18th. Check the description show notes for those details. Smelling really good in here, guys. This is a great idea. I like the, you know, I've never just settled with, with one incense like I did last time. I think I might entertain doing, doing two at once if I, get a, if I get a wild hair at my butt, as it were. So that's kind of the announcement um, about things and, and where, where we're at with that. So um, let's get into the topic, actually, that I wanted to you know, talk about today. The sanctity, the sacredness of the hearth. Um, and the sovereignty of it, mainly. Um, some things have happened recently that I've learned a lot through the, the trial and error part of learning. You know, you make mistakes, you make decisions, you say or do things that you later learn um, were not the, the wisest of choices to make. Um, but it shouldn't deter us and it shouldn't distract us from ever, uh, or it shouldn't deter us from, from doing things again in the future, right? I mean, just because you stumble, stumble and fall, trip along the way doesn't mean that you can't keep walking, you can't keep going, and that you shouldn't just, you know, just don't give up. Um, but along with that, um, it shouldn't uh, distract us from the lessons that we can learn as well. And, um, you know, because even... I saw something the other day where it said something along the lines of, you know, even, even the wrong path can lead us to the right destination. Or taking the wrong path can lead us to the right destination, something along those lines. And it gives you pause to think or gave me, you know, pause to think that, wow, you know, I, I, I went down the wrong path here a little bit. I, I strayed into a territory that I shouldn't have um, as, as, a, as an individual who serves in a, in a position of, of leadership with my tribe and you know not going to air all the details out here on this platform because uh that's private that's that's between us um but the lesson that was learned is the sovereignty of the hearth um and how those individual huts those individual roof trees um are sovereign they are they are they are sacred in, in 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 their own right, and they are governed by the the ones that are over their hearth. And none of that should ever be interfered with um, from anybody outside of that hearth and outside of that home. And no matter what, it's you know your tribe, your chieftain, your gothi, your does not have or shouldn't I should say have the. Um, oversight or, or the or the position to tell you how to run your home to tell you how to live your life and to tell you what to do and, and to make ultimatums or to make um you know it's it's either this or that and 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 so forth there is a fine line um i will say that there is a fine line i feel that 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 someone like a chieftain in a tribe or, or whoever rules the tribe whoever leads the tribe in that in that ultimate position um, however, the tribal structure is set up, right? Every tribe is going to be different. Every kindred is going to be set up a little bit differently. Um, and that's for them, you know, their hall, their call. Shout out Eric Shervin, the Ravens call, not my hall, not my call. And it kind of ties into this in, 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 in many, many ways. So we're going to talk a bit more about that. Um, so the lessons that we learned or that I learned uh, when it comes to the intent behind trying to insert yourself in places where you shouldn't um, or to have a say in things that you shouldn't, for example, uh, how someone runs their home or what somebody does with their own life within their own hearth, within their own home. And, uh, you know, stepping into that and, and, and making, uh, again, ultimate, giving ultimatums or, or, or making rules where you shouldn't. 
it's a fine line for somebody in that position, like a chieftain or a goalie or, or whoever's that top leader of the, of the tribe, because it is, it is their responsibility to preserve the tribal, the tribal luck and, and to be that sort of caretaker of the tribal luck and to make sure that things that are being done within the tribe um, are, are safe and good and will, will, will bring luck to the tribe and not damage the tribe's luck. But it is a, I've learned it, it is a very fine line uh, that, that one walks when it comes to that because individual homes, individual people, individual families, individual hearths have their own luck that they need to, to work out and they have their own luck that they need to preserve and their own, uh, you know, all of that. That's not the chieftain's job. Um, and it's not his or her job. It's not their job to interfere to the point that that person's house is under that chief or that leader's or that ruler's um, oversight. Um, and if it gets to that point, then you start getting into territory I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's it's pouring down rain. It probably is not going to pick up on on the mic, um, but it's 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 pouring down rain here. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll be able to keep this rolling without any technical difficulties or interference. Sometimes the weather can have strange effects on electronics and technology and things. Um, but so anyway, defining barriers, defining the lines. Um, there has to be lines set, right? And there has to be a, a, an understanding and a respect of what lines not to cross. The sovereignty of the home, the sovereignty of the hearth is, is, is paramount as much as the sovereignty and in, 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 in preserving the, uh, the luck of a tribe is. Um, it's all important. You know, but it's 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 not the responsibility of the chieftain, let's say, to make sure that you know John Smith's family is 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 acting right, right? That's the responsibility of John Smith, you know. So whoever John Smith is with, whatever his you know life is is uh, whatever angle his life is taking, whatever direction his life is heading in, that's John Smith's business, not necessarily the chieftain's. Now if it gets to the point where the decisions that John Smith is making as a member of the tribe start to negatively impact and, and have an effect on the overall tribal luck, then it's the chieftain's job or the go the, whoever it is, whatever that person's job is, is to um, see to it that it is addressed, you know, in, in a right way. So when we talk about, tribe or whenever I talk about tribe I'm always referring to that as a an extension of the hearth and it should never take over the importance of the hearth because again of the, the sovereignty the sanctity of of it um, and the way that I've seen how heathenry best functions is is things start at the home it has to have you, know, you have to have a strong home you have to have a strong roof tree. You have to have a strong hearth. You have to have a strong home life in order for the, the tribe to, to grow out of that because it's, it's again, it's, it's like a, an extension of the family. It's where in modern times, I feel we see the, 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 the dynamic of, of, you know, kin and kith, you know, kin is family of, of your blood. Kith is, is the married into or uh, oathed into family that are not necessarily tied to you through blood, but are nonetheless tied to you in the way that, um, whether it be through oath or through exchanging of, of, of luck and weird, you become, you know, like kin, that, that kith element. And, you know, we see this uh, in examples throughout many of the sagas and, and in some of the older uh, sources that we have that we can look to and, and see how society functions. So it, it's like a, a representation of that in modern times now. But none of it should, um, none of it, none of the tribal building activity, none of the tribe 
uh, the furthering of, of, of a tribe should ever get into, you know, inserting them, inserting oneself into a, the sanctity of, of, the, of the hearth. Now, I suppose one could say that if the tribe starts out with family um, and you have always been family and then your tribe, tribal affairs um, be, become now opened up to more people as the tribe grows, the dynamic has to change. The, the relationship has to change. It's like, yeah, we may be brothers. We may be cousins. We may be uncles and nieces, nephews, et cetera. Um, and that would never change. Um, and then, you know, at the same time, now we have other people who are becoming part of the tribe, the extension of this family. And so we have to be careful of, of that whole thing too. And that's, that's, I think where for me, you know, I was having some challenges uh, in, in navigating through because the way our tribe has started became very, um, my dog just moved my foot and my dog's sleeping up under my feet because it's raining. Get in there, Gunner. Get in there. Go. Get in there. Yeah. Before you get kicked again. <laughs> um, but the way that the way that our tribe has started, you know, has been very family centric and, 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 and circulated around how strong we were as a family unit. Um, and the family became as such, not through blood, but through, again, uh, through through tying of weird and through sharing in in ritual and in having um, a sense of mutual obligation that frith bond um, being being secured and that's what kind of made us family. So we have always been very open and very transparent with a lot of things, more so than we should have, is 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 kind of the lesson that I, you know, took away from there. Um, there there were definitely times when oversharing. Uh, took place and it, uh, it it proved to not be a good thing for the hearth for the home thankfully because things started out strongly with the hearth and with the home these types of roadblocks these types of hiccups these types of you know things that can get kind of ugly at times you know you, you know being very open and transparent with each other to talk through, through these challenges you know it, it it your feelings can get hurt um but I would rather have that every single time than to be um, lied to and to be kept behind a curtain um, and, and, and pretended amongst, you know what I mean? I'd rather have that open and honest approach to things. And that's how, that's how we've done it. And that's how we're going to continue to do it. And that's how I would urge anybody um, looking to join a kindred or, or become part of a tribe or, or start one yourself perhaps um, is, um, you know, again, your hall, your call, you do what you want, how you want to do it based off of whatever. Um, but from my experience and from what I've come to, to learn is that at, you know, establish those safe and, 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 and sovereign boundaries, right? Make sure that people know that when they become part of a group, that they are not going to be dictated they are not going to be, you know, ruled over as, as though they were peasants. Um, there is a structure, there is an order, and there is a reason for that structure and order, but it is not to infiltrate and insert into the lives and into the sovereignty of, of the home and of the hearth. And that is something that I would never uh, change and, and, and will never change, you know. It's, it's kind of the thing that started us off um, in, in, our, in our approach on, on building our tribe. Um, but, but again, because so far as it is right now, the tribe has, has, has been mainly in, in only close family or, or kith extension of family, you know, the thoughts of, of how that applies to us have, have been kind of lost in the lines um, a bit or are lost in the sand. You know, so there has to be that. There has to be that respect. There has to be that understanding of we're going to do our thing. We're going to be what we're going to be. We're going to do what we're going to do in our hearth. And then when we get together as a tribe, we're going to do the tribe thing. And until or unless one affects negatively the other, stay out of it, you know?
So that is, and I, you know, I wanted to use this week's episode, this week's podcast to really talk about that and, and get that out there because I, I see a lot of folks in our area, um, in our middle Tennessee area, looking for a tribe or looking for a kindred, or looking for a group to be a part of. Whichever group you end up deciding, whether it's, you know, you come out here to Raven Moon Hearth and you want to learn more about their way of doing things, or whether you uh, talk to, to me or, or some of the other uh, tribes member, tribal members of our uh, tribe, Verity Folk, uh, and ask us about things, you know, that should be something that you have in the forefront of your mind. Like, I'm, you know, we are about that. We, we support that. Um, we recently had to really live by that and, and learn what that means in its application. So, and if it's not any of our groups, you know, if it's, if you're elsewhere, if you're listening and watching and you're not in this area and you're, and you're looking for something in your area, I would very, again, highly suggest that, you know, as you consider what you're considering, make that a, a stipulation, make that something that you will not, uh, you know, abide. If, if, if they're not willing to keep those lines defined and, and, and keep the sovereignty of the hearth with the people who are in that hearth themselves, you know, I, I would very strongly consider, reconsider tying yourself to a group that, that wants to be in your business in that way. So you do you, they will do them, but consider that. That's a, that is this week's kind of a thought or lesson um, that I wanted to, to mention the other kind of half of this whole thing, you know, intertribal relationships. Again, it's kind of a, a segue into that. And by the way, I know that if, um, if, if by the time this airs, um, you guys are, are, are seeing or hearing another, uh, video from Eric Shervin at the Ravens call the word weaver. Um, I, I think he may have either content coming up or maybe in the near future, or maybe the one that, that that's about to be released that ties a little bit into this. So it's going to be interesting. We used to, it's crazy because me and him, you know, we, we upload stuff on a different schedule and, and his life has been so busy um, and so hectic. Um, and, and, and he's had so little time to, to release content that uh, in, in back when we were, you know, he was uploading videos every week and I was too, I mean, I still upload the podcast every week, but things have changed a little bit in terms of my, you know, everything, <laughs> everything has changed. But anyway, my, my point is that we used to put videos out, not ever talk to each other, not know what each other was, was, was doing in terms of content. And it would just so happen that so much like his content would have um, tie into to what I was saying, or I would say something that would tie into his and there was like a similarity. And it's almost like, you know, people would think, are you guys talking about stuff in the background? Are you coming up with, you know, the content to, to, to push out? And it's like, no, we'd ever we don't collaborate in that way. You know, we, we had the, the video collaborations that we've done that were planned and that were, you know, thought about. Um, but some of the other stuff that was unplanned was just like, wow, you know, it's almost kind of eerie. Um, now I will say that this topic of discussion was something that I was privy to and I knew ahead of time that he was going to be doing this. But I did not intend on the things that have happened that led up to me wanting to talk about this. To, to obviously fall in the same line or time frame. So we're talking about it now. You'll probably hear something uh, along the same lines, or at least the same topic in terms of intertribal relationships and, and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm excited to, to know that that may be something coming down the pipeline for Eric or from Eric. So you guys be sure to check out the Ravens call on YouTube and um, see what he's got coming up soon. So um but anyway, without knowing what he's going to say, without knowing what his topic, if, if it even is going to be, I'm still going to proceed. Because again, with, with, with what I was mentioning earlier about us in our area in Middle Tennessee and, and, and having you know, the Raven Moon Hearths uh, Soon Abloat event coming up, it is rekindling a relationship that um, myself and, and, and other members of our tribe sort of got in we're starting to get into before the pandemic and then because of the pandemic and, and the way the world went and everything it, every you know last few years have just been wild wild and crazy last couple of years have been wild and crazy and so now with with uh 
again, as I mentioned earlier, some of the roadblocks that we had before lifted. Um, now we're, we're, we're really hungry to get back into such things as, you know, park moots or, or pub moots or, you know, meeting up at restaurants or, or coffee shops or, or whatever the case may be and just socializing, not having, you know, outdoor events or, or big, huge camping sites or anything like that, but just having semi-regular public meetups like, hey, guys, we're going to, you know, post about it on our social medias. Hey, we're going to be at, you know, whatever it is, whatever restaurant, whatever bowling alley, whatever park, you know, just we're, we're going to be here hanging out, you know, come, come, come say hi, you know, come meet the pagans and heathens in your community and come see about making new friends, meeting new people and, and establishing ties with each other to perhaps continue the, and grow the community. So we want to do that more and given the opportunity to come to such an event like Sunablo is a great networking opportunity because there's going to be people from other walks of, of polytheism. It's not just a, a heathen event. There's going to be, to my knowledge, there's going to be a couple of different uh, pagan covens. I don't know if they're Wiccan or, you know, what, what they are, but I, you know, as Greg told me it's, you know, a couple of different covens from the area, you know, so Kentucky, um, you know, like the Fort Campbell area of Tennessee slash Kentucky and, and wherever else, I'm not sure. Um, but again, it's, 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 an, it's a thing that they've had for years and, and, and people have, have come from out of the state, out of the immediate area and have, and have made the journey to, you know, come and, and meet people and, and partake in the games and in the festivities and in the, the feasting and the, the fellowship and it's good stuff. I'm glad to be a part of that again. I'm glad to be able to step out and away from where we've kind of been stuck in and, and, and get to know more people. So uh, that's exciting. And I, I really hope that, you know, any, anybody that's listening and watching that's in the Tennessee area, whether you're East, West, um, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, wherever, I mean, sure, it's a big state, but when there's, a, you know, a month or two plan event that that's coming up, or if it's an annual event that is, you know, every year it happens around the same time and you have that enough, enough time to, to plan ahead and, you know, make the arrangements to be able to be there. We want to be a part of those things too. And we want to, um, you know, like I was telling Greg, it's, you know, and we're not trying to poach anybody we're, we're not trying to, Hey, let's come hang out with your group and see how many of your people we can, take over to our group, nothing like that. It's just, Hey, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is how we do it. This is where we do it. This, you know what I mean? Um, and, and who knows, you know, that, that could be the seed that is planted for other people to, to come and try things out, you know? Um, so the intertribal relations, having a neighboring tribe open up their arms, the, the, the gestures of hospitality to people, um, and then us being a part of it. it. It's a great, I think, you know, display, and it's a great gesture of the sincerity that uh, much of the pagan and heathen communities possess, you know, the sincerity, the want to, to be there for each other, to help each other, to give each other a place that we know we can come to where there's like-minded people, you know, you don't have to be a Germanic pagan. You don't have to be, you know, a, a neo-pagan Wiccan. You don't have to be, you know, um, whatever, just it, you know, you can take a, a Celtic pagan. Pro I mean, I don't know, just whatever your polytheistic approaches to things. I mean, the hearth has been I'm talking about Raven Moon hearth. Now they they've been accepting and open to, to people there's another big event in in nashville every year the puff pagan unity festival you know I and mean, you want to talk about bringing people together man um nashville pagan pride day um when they were doing that it's been several years but i mean you talk about thousands of people thousands of people from all over the state country even that come to this i even met a guy here was from england you know comes to the thing every year be great to have something like that 
uh, and, and, and be a part of it, you know, and, and, and know that if it's established, then, then we have other pagans, and we have other heathens, we have other folks in the community that want to share and, 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 and just tie weird with each other, you know? So I'm all for it. I am all for it. Again, you know, you gotta, you gotta, it's all great to talk about. And, and, and the, the idea of it, the idea of, you know, sharing uh, members or, or, or having relationships that transcend barriers between tribes, you know, um, that, that, that can get into <clears throat> some of the stuff I was mentioning earlier, where about, you know, tribe leaders, whose job it is and whose obligation it is and whose role it is to, to protect and preserve and safeguard the, the luck of the tribe you know, that opens things up a bit, you know, so you got to be careful with just how accepting and how, I don't know, you know, inviting you are. Um, it's great to have that acceptance. And it's great to have that, you know, willingness to, to be open. Um, there does need to be, I think, some checks and balances in place, you know, because again, you just don't want to, oh, yeah, we're so accepting, we're so universal, you know, that we're just gonna let everybody and anybody come in here and have a bloat with us and have a ritual with us, you know, um, got to be careful with stuff like that. Um, some of those things I, I feel are, especially when it's, you know, tribal events, tribal ritual, tribal traditions, the through of the, of the respective tribe, like that should be kept closed to that tribe and members of that tribe um, or their honored guests. I've seen that work before. Um, so it's, you know, it's a, it's a tight rope that we walk. It's a fine line that we, uh, that we, that we definitely navigate to consider the things that I'm talking about, preserving that luck, making sure that um, you're not allowing any bad luck to, to, to spoil your well, you know? So, lessons learned, exciting things coming up, you know, for those that don't follow the uh, Midgard Musings page on Facebook, there is a, a Facebook group called Middle Tennessee Heathens, um, and it is a Midgard Musings run group. So, Middle Tennessee Heathens, um, there'll be a link for that in the description as well, if you guys want to check out if you're on Facebook. Uh, but I do try to cross-promote everything. Um whether it's on the Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube community uh, pages. So I think most everybody has more than one form of, of social media. Um, and if you don't, then you're listening to this and you know that uh, we'll share any updates about things and, and, and keep you posted about where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing when it's a public, uh, open to the public event. Because again, it's, it's, it's nice to have these talks and it's nice to have this you know, platform to, to share and learn from. Um, but the real deal is when you're face to face. And then for anybody that's, you know, close enough that can make the trip, and make it happen. That's great. So with that being said, this might, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode, but I think, you know, there's no need to, to draw things out any longer than what, than, 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 you know, what they need to be. So recently we just got a new patron um, on, on the Midgard Musings Patreon. Um, so M Darby, thank you so much for your, uh, Yarl pledge. Thank you again to Alex D Jeffrey Wright and Janet King, who are our Yarl and Chieftain tier patrons on Patreon. Couldn't do this without you couldn't do this with any of you really, but a special thanks to, uh, the patrons on Patreon who have pledged, um, and continue to do so. It is the end of the month. So right around the corner here, if you are um, on that tier, check out the, the links in the, in the show notes for the link tree link for the Patreon page to, to know that you will be getting, at the Chieftain level, you will be getting a rune draw at the end of the month. So be on the lookout for that email before the next podcast airs. If you're not a Chieftain patron and you want to know more about that, then again, the link is in the link tree link down below or over here or up there or wherever it is. Uh, click on that link tree link, go to the Patreon page and see um, 
what it's going to take for you to get the same perks. Channel members, very special thanks to you as well. I think we've got some new ones here lately too. I don't have those lists listed, um, but if you are a YouTube channel member and you are um, donating and pledging your support in that way, a very special thanks to you as well. And if you're not uh, doing any of that sort of you know financial monetary support, don't feel bad. You are awesome enough just for staying around, just for listening, just for sharing, you know, sharing the videos, liking the videos, commenting, engaging. I couldn't ask for more than that, really. It's, it's great to have the, the supporters at your back that we do have um, that, that offer their, you know, monetary support. Um, so it's, it's never going to be turned down and that's always appreciated. And I hope that you're finding worth in that um, with what I do here. Um, but just by simply liking the video, right? Smash the like button. It's, it's funny to say, but do it. It helps the algorithm. Commenting also helps the algorithm. So if you're watching this on the live premiere, whatever your thoughts are, whatever you had to say, head to the comment section, not the, not the live chat, but head over to the comment section and then share the video, share it with your friends, share it with your pagan community, share it with the folks around you that you think may want to come and hang out with us every Thursday morning for a little bit as we talk about random heathen ramblings. So again, thank you all so much. Um, it's been wonderful hearing, uh, you know, we can sit here and talk with you guys today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend coming up. It's the Memorial Day weekend. So for a lot of us here in North America, we'll, we're, we're going to have a, an extended weekend of hopefully relaxation and um, enjoyment with, with family, kin, and kith. So I hope you all get a chance to do that. And until we talk again, may your hearth fires continue to burn bright, as Eric would say. May the gods watch over you, and may your ancestors continue to smile upon you. <laughs>